Today we're going to be talking about sound bars versus speakers. Which one is going to be best for you? You really think people want a room full of speakers, huh? Well, it does sound better. What's going on guys? Before we get into it, if you've got a passion for audio and video and want to keep up with what's new in the home theater space, consider becoming a subscriber for new weekly content. So do you guys remember when the home theater on a box was a big thing a few years back? It was a 5.1 setup with oftentimes five cheap little speakers with a quote unquote subwoofer. They usually came with a combination receiver slash DVD or Blu-ray player. And if the DVD player broke, you kind of had to replace the whole thing. Well, to me, the soundbar is the new generation of a home theater in a box. It's a one box solution that with certain bars will give you an 11 channel surround sound experience. When I think about it, it sometimes blows my mind. It's kind of ridiculous to think that one long speaker can replace 11. It's just physically not possible. But with multiple speakers in one long soundbar and some digital signal processing or DSP, some of the better soundbars can actually create the illusion of multiple speakers. Now to be fair, some soundbars do rely on separate surround speakers that go either behind or to the sides of your couch to give a fuller surround experience. But it's not always just about sound quality, it's about the convenience factor. And what do you mean by that? Well, here's the thing. You've got a great TV, but you just can't hear it. TVs are so slim nowadays, there's really no place to put a quality sounding speaker in them. You just wanna hear the news or your favorite sitcom and hear what they're saying. And there are some people who could care less about surround sound. The simplest solution is to just plug a soundbar into it. You can go to your local electronic store or just hit up Amazon and get a cheap soundbar for like $100. It'll make dialogue coming from the TV a whole lot easier to hear. And you don't have to worry about getting one of those home theater in a boxes and running wires to a half dozen speakers. That's the convenience factor. It's a simple plug and play matter and you're done. I can't argue with that. Separate speakers in that situation, you're right just won't work out. Well, this was a quick video. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe. Whoa, whoa, we're not done yet. Now let's talk about sound quality. We'll start off with the easiest setup, two channels or two speakers. To get this going, you will need a simple two channel stereo receiver and of course two speakers. With just two speakers, you can create what's known as a phantom center channel. That means after you've placed the speakers on the left and right sides of your TV, if you then sit in the middle between those two speakers in front of the television, it'll create the illusion you have another speaker dead center coming from the television. Kind of like what a sound bar would sound like. Not only will it sound like voices are coming from the TV, sounds will appear to come from a larger area in space. It's gonna create a nice wide three-dimensional soundstage. And if you want, you can even add an inexpensive subwoofer so those action movies and music videos have a lot more impact. And it's not expensive. You can do this whole setup for $300 and maybe even less depending on what speakers and receiver you pick out. A soundbar at this price won't give you that three-dimensional sound since you've got a pair of speakers stuffed in one single box. And just a quick note, some of those budget soundbars will have only two speakers in them, while a similarly priced pair of speakers will have a tweeter and a woofer built in, which will give you great details along with very good bass, so explosions and people with very deep voices will sound more realistic and natural. A budget soundbar just can't compete. All right, well, if you're gonna go with a receiver, two speakers, and a subwoofer to get really good sound quality, let's even out the playing field. A receiver, two speakers, and a sub equals four separate components. You can get a soundbar with two wireless rear speakers and subwoofer to get a full Dolby Atmos DTS-X movie watching experience. If you're not familiar with what Dolby Atmos or DTS-X is, it's the type of surround sound you'd hear at a local movie theater where sounds not only come from around you, but on top of your head. To create the same level of quality with separate speakers, you'd need a minimum of seven plus your subwoofer placed around your room. And in some cases, you'd even have to hang two of those speakers above your head. Now that would be very inconvenient. So now we have the sound bar, two surround speakers and one subwoofer, which equals the same four separate components. This setup will not only sound like you have 11 speakers in your room, it'll sound just like you mentioned before. It'll have a nice wide sound stage with sound effects coming from every direction and even above your head. It does this by using a combination of DSP as well as placing multiple speakers inside the soundbar and aiming them at different directions so sounds will reflect and bounce off the walls and your ceiling. All of this great sound quality for a fraction of the space that separate speakers would take up. Well, that particular type of soundbar you bring up isn't exactly cheap. We're talking roughly around $1,000 and closer to $1,500 for one of the best ones. For around the same $1,500 mark, Yes, we'll have to get more speakers and a better receiver. You can get a good Dolby Atmos DTSX receiver for about $300, and you can piece together a 7.1.2 channel speaker package for $1,200. That's nine speakers with a subwoofer and receiver for the same $1,500. That type of sound quality will be unmatched from any soundbar in that price range. Well, any soundbar in any price range for that matter. You'll have distinct sound effects coming from separate individual speakers, 
So let's say a helicopter is flying above and to the left side of the room, it'll come exactly from that spot. With an 11 channel soundbar, you're relying on sound bouncing around your room and hoping it bounces back at your ears properly. I mean, let's face it, just because you add two speakers on the top of a soundbar doesn't guarantee it's gonna bounce off your ceiling and properly find its way back to your ears. If you've got a vaulted or an unusually high ceiling, you might as well forget about a full surround effect. That sound will just go up and go somewhere else. So you've just thrown away $1,500. Also with separates, you can always upgrade any part of the system as technology changes. With a soundbar, you'll be buying a whole new setup all over again. Now don't get me wrong, those expensive Dolby Atmos DTS-X soundbars definitely have a specific use case. If you're tight for space or just don't want unsightly boxes placed around your room, a soundbar can create a certain level of immersiveness. Or if you're building a dedicated home theater complete with a projection setup, a soundbar just won't cut it. Imagine going to a movie theater and they had a single speaker behind the screen. No bueno. Yes, if you're willing to sacrifice space for a true surround sound experience, there really is no substituting for having separate individual speakers. It will require more work to get things up and running, and like I mentioned, it's not a simple convenient solution. So basically, if you value accurate high quality sound reproduction, then go separates. If you need convenience, go soundbar. There's literally solutions for every budget for whichever method you choose to go with. For a list of recommended products, we'll leave some links down below in the description. If you guys have another reason for going full surround or soundbar, then sound off in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media and Patreon. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.